Gamer Ranks has a video. It's called Eight Recent Gaming Trends That Absolutely Suck. Gaming has been on the uptrend for a couple of years now. 2023 was a great year. Oh, man. It was a great year for games. What was this released seven days ago? Yikes. It was a great year, except for the thousands of people that lost their job. But that doesn't mean there aren't some less than desirable patterns, let's say. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, eight recent gaming trends that app- And he's using Suicide Squad as B-roll. Games as a service. Exactly. Absolutely suck. Starting off at number eight, it's bad game UIs, uh, user interfaces for the lay. They've been a joke for years now. I'm pretty sure that original- Really, UI? I'm surprised UI is on this list at all underwater escort mission picture is 12 years old and i know people have been making fun of bad overly cluttered uis from even before that but things seemed like they were improving and yeah, honestly if you look at the overall gaming landscape the ui is generally getting better if you i agree with that the type of person who likes as little ui as possible that is um i am that type of person there were a lot Agreed. of games in 2023 that had simple unobtrusive ui elements that were not really distracting but uh that doesn't mean there isn't a trend of bad uis that exists alongside that we call that a parallel trend Wait. and oh does it exist okay this is so bad. there's been a mix of <laughs> positive and negative impressions about suicide squad yeah. from rocksteady uh, in Agree. terms of gameplay uh but the ui design on the other hand i mean look at this cacoff yeah rocksteady came out during their q a's because i i'm on their server or whatever and i look at their q a's and they said oh you can turn all this stuff off but the problem is this is the default setting who thought this was a good idea is the default setting often he posted by reddit user curl it's literally like all those ui joke images come to life like remember that game gearbox did that was meant to be an overwatch killer battleborn suicide squads ui looks a lot like that but somehow actually more cluttered and confusing the thing is separately a lot of this stuff isn't bad but altogether, it really overwhelms there is just simply too much going on here it's information overload information overload it's crazy uh, maybe rocksteady will ease back and fix this crap before launch uh, or at least give us the option to turn some of this stuff off i don't you can turn it off who know but seriously ugh, this is this is too much and it's hardly the only recent game that's been lambasted over its ui it's probably one of the most cluttered i've ever seen but uh, i mean i guess another macro problem is tiny text I don't think we can accuse Suicide Squad of that, but uh, do you ever remember trying to play Dead Rising on a CRT? Back I love in the Dead day? Rising. It was just unreadable, and for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to have gotten a lot better. It seems like developers just assume people are playing on huge monitors, but I don't know why they're overlooking the rise of handheld PCs like the Steam Deck, which is hugely popular. You would think that they'd add in some kind of option to adjust text size as a matter of excessive. I. How many Steam Decks are out in the wild? Is it really that popular? I haven't looked. Ability? But there's just nothing, and a lot of games are bad about this. Destiny, I would argue that Destiny's problem isn't the UI so much. It's the fact that like, if you're new to Destiny or your laps are like I am and you sign on, what is happening? You are just bombarded with like, go to this, go to this, go to this, go to this, go to this. And it's just like too much. It's too much. You can't follow anything. like. I have 2,000 hours in Destiny and I lapse for a few months. I sign in and I'm just totally lost. It's it's not going to keep working. It should be easy. Just resize the UI um, to make it readable on certain displays. I know it's not trivial or anything, but it's more trivial than a lot of other accessibility settings that games have now. Why isn't there a text size slider? Paul, yeah. And same. number seven, terrible licensed games are back somehow. A trend that I just didn't think would come back. Terrible licensed games like King Kong. He's going to do King Kong and Gollum. For years, it seemed like the bad licensed game had finally been banished to the mobile games market. But somehow in 2023, <laughs> these half-baked, overpriced piles of crap have managed to scrape their way back onto wait, Steam, wait. the eShop, and the PlayStation What were the bad store. ones? I'm talking about garbage like Kong Skull Island, Lord of the Rings Gollum, yeah. or Walking Dead Destinies. Just total junk 
that publishers have the gall to sell for nearly full price. These games are not worth 20 bucks, let alone 50. It's tempting to call them lazy cash grabs, but from reading about them, you find developers were clearly overworked and underpaid. Like it's a. It's not the dev's fault this stuff happens. It's. It's like management or the publisher saying we need this in a year. It's insane. Miracle these games even came out. And it's it's publisher greed that ultimately makes these games bad, yeah. not necessarily the developers. I mean, a lot of the time they're given impossible timetables and pathetic budgets to put together a game that's selling for the same price as like Baldur's Gate 3 or Elden Ring. It's such a strange contradiction. Like 2023 was without a doubt one of the best years for gaming in a long time. But here's the thing. Here, here's the reason those games exist, because they get a lot of attention. People buy them for the memes, so that one year of development costs just to put the game out there and have it memed or play because of the memes, they see they can make two times the ROI. So why would they stop? Like, just don't buy those games. So yeah, that's it's definitely a, sh a bad trend. But like with anything else, if it ends up getting supported with a monetary backing, they will continue. That's why microtransactions exist. That's why physical media is like on the way out because nobody's for the majority of people, they're not buying physical media. They buy digitally, and that's why it's gone. Um, but I ended up playing a ton of bad games just because of Game Mill. It's it's shocking. That a company has been oh, around game mill that made long all of them? with their primary problem in the name. This is a company that was founded <laughs> 22 years ago with that name doing what they do. Like these games should be sold for like $3 on phones, not as $50 premium experiences. And, and licensed games Phone saw games a bit of a resurgence now. in general over the last year. We got a great RoboCop game, yeah. a great Warhammer 40K RPG, got yeah, a couple RoboCop of League of Legends spinoff games that ended up being pretty good. Uh, but those IPs like kind of work perfectly with video games. If you go back in video game history, yes. a lot of the reason licensed X -Men games Origins so bad Wolverine. was twofold. First, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. X-Men Origins Wolverine was dope it like it had bad parts but overall that game was freaking cool made by raven software that's like one of my favorite superhero games the the games themselves were kind of an afterthought in marketing oh we should have a game to promote ghostbusters too i'd argue that and the second part Batman, is that all the NES norms game of video bad. games were still being it, when he's talking if i'm talking is that like too much i could turn him down a little bit let me know developed during the era where there was an onslaught of that type of game a game that we might consider a clunker today might be somewhat innovative 20 years ago so there's a little mm -hmm. bit more margin for error and they could get away with a little bit more that isn't to say that they weren't bad games then as well turn down expectations a touch. were different i'm still gonna say however that nobody was asking for a lord of the rings game where you play as Gollum. And number six is developers responding to reviews on Steam. Love them or hate oh them. Oh, my Steam God. Do serve this them. was such a dumb decision. <laughs> Don't do this. This is this is nutty to me that devs are going on Steam and responding to negative Steam reviews. Like, I, I was kind of surprised by this An one. Important function, and I am personally glad they exist. Yes, they can be dumping grounds of nonsense or tedious culture war battlefields, but as a way to gauge general impressions of a game, Steam reviews can be helpful. I mean, you actually have to read them because often there is strange opinionated nonsense, but in terms of indie games that tend to fly under the radar, they can be especially helpful. Yeah. One feature that Steam affords devs is the ability to respond to Steam reviews. Um, And I want to make it clear that... How do you feel about Steam reviews? So I think it's it's a very dumb idea to do that but studies show that like it actually ends up helping the game in the long run like sway opinion i i think uh bethesda was one of the first devs to like be be called out for it like what are you doing why are you doing that and i think that's more because it seemed like it was ai generated responses or like copy pasted it was very strange it isn't always something that sucks. 
sometimes it serves an important function like offering technical advice or explaining game mechanics or even telling people that they're aware of a bug and are working to fix it. Those are fine. I agree. Being able to reply to reviews is useful for engagement and allows them to acknowledge problems and offer solution. The very concept of devs responding to reviews is not the problem here. The problem is how this is being utilized, particularly by big developers and publishers like Bethesda. Uh, They've been taking some heat over attaching these massive replies to Steam reviews on Starfield. They're not really really addressing issues or trying to resolve technical problems. They're basically just arguing against game boring, crafting sucks type reviews by saying... Yes, that's what the problem was. A user posted a, a review and they're like, hey, I played this a bunch. I didn't like these aspects of it. And then they're like, no, you're wrong. You need to play more. Was That's how it, regardless of what they said, that's what it sounded like. And it was weird. It was so freaking weird to see that. Look, if that guy didn't like the shooting mechanics or whatever, that's his thought on it. And it wasn't like a trolley post. It was somebody just saying, hey, I don't like these things about it. Here's why I didn't like it. As far as, far as I remember anyway. It was saying, there's lots yeah. of things to do in the game. And the crafting, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> if we do say so ourselves. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I don't think. If somebody comes out and says this thing sucks and the developer says, no, you're wrong. It's actually great. It's like, bro, I paid the game for 20 hours. I don't like it. Like, <laughs> like what are you doing? that starfield is incredible or anything but i'm certainly among the people that are more likely to defend it than attack it but yeah that's batshit insane you look demented doing that bethesda stop doing that don't like, all this i agree to do not criticism with don't do it text comes off petty and delusional and again i'm not necessarily saying that everybody ragging on starfield in their reviews are right either like i just said i'm among the people who are likely to defend the game even if i will do so while also saying they need to switch to unreal immediately and just give up on their stupid engine it's not a terrible game those people however are entitled to their opinion and one of the biggest developers of all time coming in to try to flap its dick out on the table in the comments, language it seems like it should be beneath them i don't know maybe some people like that bethesda is willing to defend their game but i'm weirded out when somebody flaps their dick out on a table i think it seems desperate and weird sorry yeah it, it's a little weird when one of the biggest companies in the world go into the comments to defend people who say, I don't enjoy I don't enjoy your product. That's weird, right? Hey, I didn't like it. Here's why I didn't like it. Oh, well, we think you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. At number five, the war against mods. I don't mean like moderators, I mean modifications. The mod community is often the thing keeping a game alive well past the point where a developer gives up on it. I played a lot of these mods, they're pretty fun. Parade, a fan-made mission pack for the original Thief that came out in 2023, about 25 years after the original. One of my big projects at IGN right now is I'm trying to figure out how to mod GTA V and like make it the best graphical mods for free. Like I don't want to pay any money. So I'm trying to create that right now. It's almost done. Um, the problem I run into is like the mods conflict and stuff like that. But uh, Rockstar was guilty of like forcing a bunch of people to take down their mods, which was very strange. It was just super weird. Regional game. Uh, and it's good also. Mods are, are what keep games alive. But recently <laughs> it feels like a lot of forgot about are these. kind of turning on them. Probably the most recent example is Capcom, who just last year said they'd consider mods to be cheats, and we're yeah. trying to figure out how to block them in their games entirely. I mean, there could be an argument to be made here. From Developers need to stop controlling how people play their games. Like, it's so weird to me. Oh, we don't want you to mod uh, Street Fighter to put a Ninja Turtle in there fighting Ken or Ryo. It's just like, why? Who cares? It, if anything, it helps drive sales because people are like, oh, I can mod the game. Let's go do some goofy stuff and like have Batman fight Kermit the Frog. It's, it's just stupid fun, right? Let people have their fun. Who cares?
multiplayer games. Some mods could affect the balance of the game in a way that's unfair, but Capcom that's is fine. targeting everything, including single character model replacement mods. Like, remember all the goofy Mr. X replacement yeah. <laughs> mods when Resident Evil 2 Remake that one was came good. out? Capcom wants those to not exist. Like, that's something that makes people like your games, Capcom. And the way that they're stopping people from modding their games, they're adding DRM to them because, yeah, yeah DRM. People love that, and they're doing it to such an extent where they're adding it to, like, old games. like Red Okay, I'm stupid. Uh, why do people hate DRM so much? I'm doing this live if, if you're watching the VOD, but, like, why is DRM so bad? Is it just system bloat? Because my understanding is DRM is bad because of system bloat. But there's got to be more to it than that, right? As an evil revelations, unsurprisingly, reduces that FPS. The DRM broke the game for many people, and it was performance hit okay. almost as quickly as it was added on. For now, most mods and games like Street Fighter, it reduces FPS by 10 to 15 FPS, and it messes with performance. Yeah, okay, fuck DRM. Oh, <laughs> dang it, I'm I'm cursy today. Fighter Six are safe, but Capcom seems pretty serious about blocking mods from the games. And I hate to single out Bethesda again, because normally they're one of the better devs out there when it comes to mod support. Yeah. But they recently patched Skyrim in a way that didn't just break many mods for players. It also added a new paid mod store on top of that, just to add yeah. insult to injury. They may not be actively trying to stop modding, but they don't make it any easier. And again, that's what I think would be their main argument for staying on the creation engine. And they seem to be, you know, coming up with another <laughs> good reason why they shouldn't stay on the creation engine here. And number four is soft aim hacks that are hurting online multiplayer games. Okay, this I is mean, like, I, haven't really I, I don't have a lot of comments on some of these because I'm just like, yeah, these stink. Like, these aren't any good. This is hacking. If you're using aim hacks, you're hacking the game. Like, you should... If it's a first-person game, who cares? If it's a if it's a multiplayer game, you, you get banned. Period. That's what should happen. Really seen widely reported on. But it's a growing issue for online multiplayer shooters that's getting worse. You're probably aware of blatant cheats like aimbots and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, the sort of thing that gets players straight up banned. So you're going to bring up Zim? Because Zim is something you can plug into a controller and it's harder to detect. From games, But there's another category of cheat that's a bit more of a gray area. These uh, soft aim hacks. Instead of breaking the rules of the I game, think that's these it. cheats just modify the tools that are already there to work in your favor a little more. The most popular variety Zen? allows players with keyboards to emulate controllers, giving what? them the benefits of using a mouse and keyboard while also taking full advantage of the strong auto-aim given to controller players. It's kind of the best of both worlds, which is great when you're using it, but sucks for everyone else. The worst thing about it is it's just taking advantage of the systems that are already in place in the game. And these sorts of tricks are pretty hard to... Yeah, honestly, ban them. If you have to modify the default input of a game in a way to specifically give you an advantage over the other players, you get banned. Detect. Multiplayer devs want to have the largest community available all the time, so they want people it's with cheating. keyboards and controllers to play together. Many of these problems can be solved by just making controller-based matchmaking, but that's a step too far for a lot of these game makers. Uh, one recent example of a game played with soft hack issues is The Finals, a game that has oh, extremely yeah. powerful auto-aim for controllers. In most you're cases, cheating. just kind of let these issues You factor. deserve to get banned. Credit, they actually did. If you use these, you're cheating. You deserve to get banned. Get out of my multiplayer games come in and adjust the auto aim to make it less powerful which limits the effectiveness of soft hacks and makes the game more fun to play in general cheating issues with online multiplayer games suck and it seems like they're getting worse but at least there are a few developers who seem serious about keeping this sort of cheating out of their games and i i'll give bungie props for that one bungie you know they've actually worked to punish people developing the hacks and people that utilize the hacks in an appropriate way i think so I think that's that's really good. Number three is uh, terrible, no good PC ports with PCs becoming yep. more and more people's main source of gaming. And with more previously console only games getting released on PC, you'd think publishers and devs would start taking ports a little more seriously. But unfortunately, in the last year, that hasn't improved. In some ways, it's actually gotten worse. I, I don't know how that's possible, but it has. A lot of ports really came out in rough shape these last years. Not just talking about indies. I mean, like games from huge studios like Naughty Dog uh, in multiple games. It, it took a very long time for the newer Star Wars to be patched on PC where it functioned in a way that was acceptable, in my opinion. It took way too long for them to figure that out.
games published by EA. Like, Last of Us Part 1 PC port was a disaster. Tons of people were complaining about the crashing, the missing textures, a lot more. Uh, Redfall also has a pretty abysmal PC port, though. Well, Redfall just generally is crap. In that game's case, it didn't run great on Xbox One X either. The king of bad PC ports in 2023 has to go to EA, though. Dead Space Remake, Wild Hearts, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor all got ports that should have been handled much better. They were okay, I didn't hear anything about Wild, maybe about Wild Hearts. I didn't hear anything about Dead Space. So I don't know where he's getting Dead Space, but I did hear that Star Wars was really rough for a long time. I think it took him like a month to get it optimized we're stuttery slow and unoptimized jedi survivor was especially bad and even more than six months later there's still pretty bad glitches and issues on wow PC. um i will say dead space remake plays pretty well for me now i don't know what they've really done i know they've patched a few minor things but it does seem significantly i don't know why he has that in his script i never heard anything about dead space better for me than at launch at least but it, it's kind of more the type of thing you'd expect from a no-name indie studio with no resources not the biggest game publishers in the world i am getting sick about complaining about this and i'm sure you're probably sick of hearing it yeah but, uh it's not like getting better and number two is even worse switch ports sometimes it's easy yeah, to forget how red good dead. you have it sure those pc games i mentioned ran worse than they should i hear the red dead port wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be With some of the switch ports from the but last still, year i'm not sure really what to say like look at the footage from mortal Kombat oh yeah it's, it's kind of cute that they even decided mortal Kombat was over, abysmal holy lord it is not worth the asking price it looks like one of those potato mode mods that people post on youtube as a joke but it's a real product it looks hideous and the load times are apparently unacceptable as well and yeah. that's nothing compared to the batman arkham knight switch port which is a disaster from top to bottom there's of course expected stuttering and slowdown in the open world but when you get in the batmobile it that's really unplayable. rough playable cut scenes go out of sync certain challenges are impossible when the phone when your when your telephone is running a game better than the nintendo switch can nintendo it's time to update your hardware come on get the switch 2 out the door finish it's disgraceful all around they're not even letting players buy the game separately if you want yeah the arkham tech is Simon 10 years old on switch you got to get arkham knight 2 no refund i know the switch is getting old so it shouldn't be a big surprise but to see the port jobs this bad for such high profile games sucks like why is doom and wolfenstein possible on this platform in a manner that's good doom was but rough certain other games aren't Oh, Doom was rough and at launch. And finally, at number one is this mass layoff and studio closure. Oh, problem. all right, yeah. Ended on a downer, but if there's one trend for the past, it right. sucks more than any other one. It's this: over nine thousand jobs were lost in the video game industry in 2023, and we're at six thousand in 2024 by the end of January. That's terrible. And those are just the ones we know about that have been announced publicly that we are completely aware of. Like, it's not required that a studio report layoffs, at least not if they're not publicly traded. And you can find developers talking about it. And I know it's a trend of layoffs that's affecting the entire tech industry, but it sucks either way. I don't care if there's reasons for it. It sucks. Uh, the reason I think makes it suck worse, actually, especially when you start talking about Embracer, who bought up every yeah. game they could to get their hands on, you know, like, a huge roster of insane crap and then here's what happened with embracer they were betting on a big investment that fell through so they made this massive purchase like super big and then the investment didn't come and they fired a bunch of people in microsoft's case like it's just a disaster also like it's also not good in microsoft's case it makes more sense in microsoft's case in embracer's case they just it's just a disaster. And they couldn't, you know, fun. Let me be clear, though. Microsoft is absolute. It's absolutely terrible that Microsoft had to lay off 1,900 people. And it's nonsense. It is ineffective management making bad decisions. And themselves, like so many great studios got embraced only to end up as another casualty of the failed Saudi deal. Like, look at Free Radical yeah. Design. They were They're picked gone. up by Embracer, started work on a new Time Splitters game, which, by the way, I can't tell you how much I want. And then they were shut down before Christmas. Yep. There are countless stories coming from studios picked up by Embracer that sound exactly the same as that. It's such a pointless waste of talent. We can only hope this is one gaming trend that cools off in 2024, because 
because obviously you don't want to see people lose their jobs. Like, that sucks. It ruins your life. Like, that's 9,000 reported lives ruined, right? At least temporarily. Obviously, a lot of these people will be given. Yeah, it's they say that losing your job is like a death in the family. It's really bad. It's it's terrible. It I can't overstate how bad it is opportunities and land on their feet and i really hope a lot of the embracer stuff ends with a lot of these studios reopening under somebody else because somebody buys the name or something i That'd don't be know great. this just i mean this just sucks so much i feel so bad for so many people and that's it for today <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like I said, I, I ending it on a bit of a downer, but I got to be honest, I've never heard of this person, but I like this video. It's really well done. So that is all. Uh leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're tired of this crap, we want to hear about it in the comments too. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows gamer ranks, right? But go hit them up. Uh yeah, normally I do my outro here. I'm recording these live sometimes, so I'm not going to do that anymore. But go subscribe to Paul Tassi. Type in P-A-U-L-T-A-S-S-I. He's like 4,000 subs away from 100K, and I really like Paul. So go subscribe to Paul Tassi. You can subscribe to me too if you want or hit that like button. But Paul Tassi is where it is at. And uh, I'll see you for the next one.